Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's Jarvis Bing Beaven here. Today I have a Grima Saruman's Footman EDH deck tech. It is a budget deck tech that at the time of this recording, the deck is valued at $86.69 according to TCG Player using Moxfield's uh, feed in. Uh, before we get into the deck, I wanted to remind you please like, comment, and subscribe on the video. Also, go and follow me on all my socials, now including threads, by following the link tree in the description of the video. You can also go and follow, uh, find my mox field and this deck list in the description of the video as well. Getting into the deck, we have Grima Saruman's Footman. He is a two, a blue, and a black for a human advisor. That is a one four. He cannot be blocked, and whenever he deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an instant or sorcery card, and you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Then that player puts the exile cards that weren't cast this way on the bottom of their library in a random order. So, starting off, we want to go and protect Grima or make Grima bigger. So we have equipment, orders, and protection. First equipment is Black Blade Reforged, 2 mana legendary artifact. Uh, equip 3 to a legendary creature, which will pretty much always be equipping it to Grima, but it gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. Combat Research is a single blue. It is an aura that whenever this uh, creature deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. And it has Ward 1 and plus one, plus one if the creature is legendary, which Grima is. Fire Shrieker is three mana, and it gives Grima double strike. Meaning that when it equips, uh, deals damage on first strike, you trigger once, and then when it does the double strike damage, it triggers again. Malkir Rebirth is a single black, and what happens? Uh, you, it's an instant that you can choose to start a creature and lose two life, and until the end of turn, if the creature dies, you return it to the battlefield tapped underneath its owner's control, so you essentially regenerate it. It also has the great ability of being an MDFC, as a Malkir Mire on the back, which is a tap land that taps for black mana. Shore Up is a single blue instant that gives your the creature plus one, plus one, and hexproof until end of turn, and you also untap it. Slip Out the Back is a single blue instant. You put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and you phase it out. Swift Foot Boots, everyone knows it. It's two generic mana, Hexproof and Haste, and Equip 1. Sword of Hearth and Home is three mana. Uh, it is the pro green and white sword, gives plus two, plus two. Whenever you deal combat damage to a player when it's equipped, you get to go and tutor for a basic land card and put onto the battlefield untapped. And then you can also uh, exile a creature and have it returned back to the battlefield underneath your control. Vorpal Sword is a single black and has quickly become one of my favorite artifacts. Uh, equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and has death touch. It has a quick cost of a two black and for five and three black until end of turn. Uh, whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game. And with Grima not a being able to be blocked, it's able to get right through. Then there is a spells matter theme to the deck. So here are the cards that care about instances of sorceries being cast. Archmage Emeritus is 2 and 2 blue for a human wizard. That's a 2-2 two -two that has Mage Craft, uh, which is whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, where a lot of the other cards are just whenever you cast. Uh, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, draw a card. Dika Fractal Theorist is 4 and a blue, human wizard. And whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, you get to create a fractal uh, that has that many plus one plus one counters equal to the mana value. And for three and a blue, target creature token can't be blocked. Lord of the Nazgul is three, a blue, and a black. Uh, Wraith Noble, that's a four, three. Wraiths you control have protection from ring bearers, not really relevant. But whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you get a three, three black wraith in with menace. And then if you control nine or more wraiths, race you control base power and toughness nine nine until end of turn. Mercurial Spell Dancer is one and a blue. Cannot be blocked. It's a two one. That whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put an oil counter on it. And then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can remove two oil counters from it. If you do, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell, you can copy it and choose new targets for the copy. Murmuring Mystic is three and a blue. 
Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you get a 1 1 blue bird illusion creature token with flying. It's a 1 5 human wizard. Professor Onyx is 4 and 2 black. It's a Liliana Planeswalker that comes in with 5 loyalty counters. Also has Magecraft, but this Magecraft is whenever you cast a copy of instant or sorcery, all of your opponents lose 2 life and you gain 2 life. Plus one, you lose one life, and look at the top three cards for your library and put one into your hand, the rest into the graveyard. Minus three, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. And minus eight is each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. And you repeat this process six more times. Scroll of the Masters is two generic mana for an artifact that whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a lore counter on Scroll of the Masters. For three generic and tapping it, Current creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each war counter on scroll of the masters. Storm of Saruman, four and two blue. Enchantment with ward three. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, copy, except the copy isn't legendary, and you may choose a new targets for the copy. What's really great about this is this also works on copying permanents. In a game recently, I got two bowls of citadels. I know, a little overkill because you only need one. But I got two. I also got two copies of Grima. Which, not overkill, because then you can hit two separate opponents with her. Swarm Intelligence is six and a blue. Enchantment, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, you may copy that spell and choose new targets for the copy. Talrond Sky Summer is two and two blue. Merfolk Wizard, a two-two. On all the commander precons, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, get a two-two blue Drake creature token with flying. And then you get us into our key synergy pieces for Grima. Hinder is one and two blue. You counter target spell, and you could, if that spell is countered this way, you, you, as the person countering the spell, gets to choose whether to put it on the top or the bottom of its owner's library instead of into that player's graveyard. Insert a sorcery you see that you like, put it on top. Problematic permanent, put it on top, and then you just get to go and shuffle to the bottom anyway. And then Lantern of Insight is one generic. Each player plays with the top card of his or her library revealed. You get to go and see what's on top of everyone's library and decide which spell looks the best for you to go and cast or which spell is most problematic that you want to go and get shuffled to the bottom. You could also tap it and sacrifice it. Target player shuffles his or her library. Memory Lapse, one in a blue counter target spell and it gets put on the top of its owner library, owner's library. Very much for the same reason that you play Hinder. Shrionic Resonator. Two generic. And then for two generic and tapping it, you copy target triggered ability you control. And you may choose new targets for the copy. Wizened Stitches is three and a blue for a fairy rogue that's a one three. Flying, and it has the same first set of texts that Lantern of Insight does, where players play with the top part of their libraries revealed. And then we have our, what I like to call good stuff. We have our card draw, our interaction, and all the other good stuff that doesn't fit into the other categories. We have Aetherize, which is three and a blue. Uh, it's an instant that you return all attacking creatures to their owner's hand. Aether Spouts, very much like Aetherize, except it's three and two blue. And the uh, owner of the creatures gets to choose whether they go to the top or bottom of the library. Archivist of Gondor, two and a blue, Human Advisor. When your commander deals combat damage to a player, if there is no monarch, you become the monarch. And at the beginning of the monarch's end step, that player draws a card. Baleful Mastery is a three and a black. Instant, if you pay the student cost, which is one and a black, uh, an opponent can draw a card. And exile target creature or planeswalker. Birthday Escape is a single blue. It's a sorcery. Draw a card and the ring tempts you. Bulls of Citadel, 3 and 3 black, legendary artifact. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play lands and cast spells from the top of your library. And if you cast a spell, you pay life equal to its mana value rather than pay its mana cost. And the super secret text on the card is tap it and sacrifice 10 permanents. Each opponent loses 10 life. 10 non-land permanents, by the way. Brainstorm is a single blue. Instant, draw three cards and put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. Complete the circuit is five and a blue with my boy Quintorius. Instant with Convoke, you may cast sorcery spells this turn as though they had flash. And when you next cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell twice. You may choose new targets for the copies. Counter spell is two blue. 
It's an instant counter target spell. Cover Surge is four hybrid Demir. So Demir, 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 Demir. Sorcery, opponent, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. You may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast that spell. Dark Ritual is a single black that makes three black mana. Decree of Pain is six and two black. Sorcery, destroy all creatures. They can't be regenerated. Draw a card for each creature destroyed this way. Or you could cycle it for three and two black and give all creatures minus two, minus two. You could draw over 20 cards with this if you get all of your token generators online. Drain of the Lock is a blue and a black. Uh, all, both modes care about the number of cards in your opponent's graveyard. Uh, and you can counter target spell with mana value less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. Or destroy target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. Feed the Swarm is one in a black. Destroy target creature or enchantment and lose life equal to that target's mana value. Boreal Scale is one in a blue. It's a counter target creature spell, but if that creature is legendary, the ring tempts you. Golem, a Scheming Guide, is one in a black. Complete transparency. This card is not very good. I personally just like the game that you get to play with the card, which is whenever it attacks, you look at the top two cards of your library, put them back in any order, then you choose land or non land. An opponent guesses whether the top card of your library is the chosen kind. You reveal that card. If they guessed right, you remove Golem from a combat. Otherwise, you draw a card and it can't be blocked this turn. Toss down negotiations is three and a block. It acts very much uh, like similarly, similarly to fact or fiction, where you're making piles, where opponents get to choose piles. And but fact or fiction, where they choose the piles, where they make the piles, and you choose. This time you choose the make the piles and they choose. You don't get too much control over the piles though. You get to go exile three cards, then exile three cards again, both face down. Look at the two piles, put one of those piles face up. Your opponent gets to choose whether to get the pile that's face up or the fit pile that's face down. Whatever pile they choose goes to hand, the other pile goes to the graveyard, and then you lose three life. Purple Master Wizard is one blue blue. At the beginning of your end step, if you've cast a non-creature spell this turn, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among non-creature spells that you've cast this turn, you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So if you cast an instant and sorcery, you can go and get an instant and sorcery. If you get the tri of the like quad effect, I guess, instant sorcery artifact enchantment, you can get all four of those as long as you show those four. Infernal Grasp, one in a black. Destroy target creature, you lose two life. Negate, one in a blue. Counter target non-creature spell. Notion Thief, two of blue and a black. It was reprinted in the precon. Of course you have to play it. Flash, and if opponent would draw a card, except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps. Instead, that player skips that draw and you draw a card. Opt is a single blue. You scry one and draw a card. Phyrexian Arena is one and two black. This is the Phyrexian text of Phyrexian Arena because the foil Phyrexian Arena that was in the bundles is now only about a dollar. The rest of them are still five dollars or more. Resculpt is one in a blue. Instant. Exile target artifact or creature. Its controller creates a 4 4 blue and red elemental creature token. Ring Sight is one a blue and a black. It acts as a tutor. The ring tempts you. And then you can search your library for a card that shares a color with a legendary creature you control. Reveal and put it into your hand, then shuffle. So this is a card I like in a lot of commander decks because your commander should have all the colors that you want to play unless it's an activated ability. Sun and Blood is two black. The target player draws two cards and loses two life. Solemn Simulacrum is four generic. When it enters the battlefield, get a basic land. When it dies, draw a card. Telepathy is a single blue. This is more of a troll card, but it's a fun card. Your opponents play with their hands revealed. Rexiel the Risen Deep is three, two blue, and a black. Legendary Kraken, that's a 5-8 that has Island Walk and Swamp Walk. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may cast target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If that spell would be put into a graveyard this turn, exile it instead. 
Now, we do play the traditional Demir artifact, Soul Ring, Felware Stone, Mind Stone, Talisman of Dominance, Thought Vessel, Midnight Clock. So those are all in there as well, but they're pretty generic for all Commander decks. And then we're playing a total of 37 lands, which includes 11 islands and 11 swamps. The reason why I built this deck is because I wanted to play a theft deck over spell table. And this is a theft deck that doesn't seal permanent. So it is a very good deck. It also scales to your pod's power level. If you're playing against a deck that's playing super powerful instants and sorceries, you get to play those. If you're playing against a pod that's playing jank, you get the jank. So it really fits into a variety of pods that way. There are lots of upgrades you can make to this deck to go and make it a more powerful deck. Improve the mana base is a big one because you do have a lot of tap lands and a lot of basic lands. Uh, also is improving the types of interaction. Instead of playing stuff like negate, you can play Force of Negation. Instead of playing cards like Decree of Pain, you can play playing Damnation or Toxic Deluge. Those are all options there. But I really wanted to go and keep this in a nice, friendly budget. This is a deck that someone that wants to go and pick up a cheap deck to go and play, they can go and play that way. But I want to thank you all for staying until the end of the video. Yet again, please like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next video, have a great one. See ya.